Well, uh, I'm going to use this pulpit for something different today, just for a few minutes. Uh, it's going to be interesting, okay. A uh, very small survey I'm going to do with you. All right, you guys ready for this? <laughs> okay. Now, this is a very uh, small uh, survey, and it's, uh, the first request is please don't write your names, okay? Because if you are used to exams, the first thing you write is your name on the top here. Yeah? So don't write your names. This is completely anonymous. Just five questions here. And these questions are actually asking you, what is your biggest need that you have right now? What do you think is the biggest issue that you are facing right now? Okay? So, I mean, there are many, but out of these five, just choose one. Don't choose more than one. You should, you should choose the biggest thing that you are facing. All right? So, don't write, uh, don't write, don't tick two. Or just circle. There are five numbers here. One, two, three, four, five. Just circle. Just one. All right? And don't make mistake of cycling more than one. And uh, we will get the answers immediately, all right? So it would be nice for you to hear uh, what survey this is all about and how we have, how do we, what are the issues that we actually have, all right? So, are you, I mean, you guys ready for this? Just two minute job? Yeah? So I'll pass it on to you. Come on, let's just pass it on. First of all, don't write your names, all right? Anonymous. And don't uh, just circle, just circle the number. Only one number. Don't circle more than one number. Just circle one number and give it back. And if you just need, you can think. Be, the, the important thing is, uh, the, uh, please, this is only for those who are uh, more than 15 years old, okay? not for small children. Those who are above 15, all right? The small kids may not be able to give a proper answer here. Above 15, if you're above 15, okay? And... Uh, uh, also, one, one request is please be frank, because no one will know what you're and who wrote this, all right? So just the only request is please be frank and answer truthfully, because then we will have a good idea of where we all are, all right? So uh, please uh, don't just uh, take what is convenient to you, and just be frank and... Uh, 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 those of you don't have, I mean, do you, I mean, you want Malayalam, I can give you Malayalam also if you want. Malayalam, India, I'll not have it. No, I like English, Madhi. Okay. So, right, uh, uh, take, uh, don't take too much of time, but please answer truthfully. And let's see. Just circle one, it's nothing much for you to do, isn't it? Just give one circle on the number that you feel is most appropriate for you right now. Ippam. Not, don't think about a uh, long time back or in the future, all right? Malayalam. One Malayalam, please, in the back. Okay. So, uh, okay. Give me, give me back all the uh, blank ones. All right? Give, give, give. Only for about 15 years, not for you, okay? Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, you finish your... Uh, Answer, just raise your hand and you'll get, you can give it back. So please collect it. Please collect the forms back to someone. Please collect it. Yes. Don't, don't fold it, please. Just go, go, open it up. Don't fold the papers. Please keep it open. Uh, uh, no one will know. Uh, why you, I mean, you are, I mean, you feel led to fold it up. Okay? You can just keep it open. We are used to all folding things up, isn't it? <laughs> Very less small survey, and uh, let's see how it comes up, all right? Thank you so much for being truthful. Please return the forms. Can you guess uh, which is the most number here? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> Just count how many you have. Uh, uh, Sammy, count first. How many? So here, we have only three for number five, but it's not finding opportunities to do more for God. Wait, wait, wait. Not finding opportunities to do more for God, only three we have here, so you, go, you guys have enough chances to do more for God, okay, wonderful, so that's just three we have here, four also we have just three, uh, uh, the question is relationship problems causing a lack of peace and joy, that also we have only three, relationship problems causing a lack of peace and joy, that's also we have only three, 
We have here, how many you have? Four. Struggling with worldly desires and thoughts, we have four. Four number. Oh, thank you very much. You can go back, okay? Come, thank you. Let's look at number two. How many we have here? 24. Number two question was spending very less, less time with God and His Word. How many? 17. Need deliverance from a major issue. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So, you like, uh, you guys found something out from this? Yeah, if you are honest and if you are truthful, the first one was spending less time with God and His Word. So, that's interesting. Uh, so, we, that shows we need uh, to really spend more time with God. So we're going to do just that today. My message is also based on that for the next two, three weeks. So I hope it will help you. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I started with a topic that I just, uh, um, you see, uh, put a number to it in my last message because I wanted to do more on that. And if you remember, the topic that I shared with you last time was Proper Bible study methods, number one. All right? So we'll do a few uh, of this and we'll, uh, we'll begin to see how one of the biggest needs, like you yourself said, is that I want to spend more time with God and His Word. And why is it that we are not doing it? And so uh, let's really work at this. Let me uh, begin by telling you Christianity is, one of, is the only religion where we need to have our spiritual senses awakened. You see, uh, we need a revelation from heaven. And so uh, the reason I believe why uh, we don't uh, go into the Word of God is because we are not drawn to the Word of God. All right? So I would say... I can, I can safely say this much. If we don't have a proper relationship with God, we will not be drawn into the word of God. You see, it is possible for us to study the word of God like we study any other, any other book, you see. But if you are to be drawn to God's word and you, you're going to you want to receive some some light, uh, some revelation from God, you have to have a proper relationship with God, all right? So, uh, I mean, this, this teaching, these classes, I would say, are for two groups of people. One are those who really need to be, find out that there is something wrong. Why am I not uh, led to the word of God? Why am I not wanting to spend time with God and his word? See? What is it that prevents me? What is it that is not giving me an urge? Why does Peter say like this, long for the word of God, for the pure milk of the word of God? Why is Peter saying that? See, you have the Bible in your, front, in your hands, isn't it? Now, surely Peter is not saying just read. If he was saying that, then all of us would have read it immediately. The command is not actually read. Of course, it's part of the command. But the command is a bit different. It says long. Instruction is long for the pure me. Now, how can we produce a longing? Think of it for a moment. Now, you know love. Many of you have had a romantic kind of experience when you got married or before marriage. I mean, does, do you, does someone have to force you to go and meet your partner? Yeah, or suppose you, I, I, I forgot to call her today. I forgot to call him today. I was, you see. Now, if you are someone who uh, had a love marriage, I'm sure you had those great romantic moments, isn't it? Ours was arranged marriage, I'm sorry to say. You see, we didn't have that pre, <laughs> pre-marriage. <laughs> Within a week, we got married. Okay, but those of you who had this pre-marital 
uh, I love this person whom I am going to marry. You would, will someone tell you to call this person up? Where does that longing come from? Tell me. You see? Now if, if you, have, you don't have a longing to talk to this person whom you love, surely something is wrong somewhere, isn't it? And why is it that we don't check our hearts and see, hey, why, why is it that this God who loves me so much, and I'm sure you have tasted of the love of God, each one of you sitting here, at least most of you sitting here. If so, why is it that we don't have a longing? Now, I just want to slow you just a slide, all right? Just, uh, so I just told you uh, two groups of people are going to be addressed here. One is those of you who don't have a longing and we have to really check our hearts and find out where we are. Second group I would really love to address are those who have a desire for God's word and you really want to know how to uh, spend time with God and his word, how to spend time with his word primarily, all right? And so we will look into both uh, of these. Why is it that we are not excited? And also, what do we do if we are excited? All right. Can I have the slide on the screen, please? Uh, uh, all right, look at this. I remember mentioning this to you last time when I shared. And uh, see, I want you to understand this very important uh, thing that Paul is actually giving us in an indirect way, actually. Now, Paul is talking about speaking in tongues in First Corinthians chapter 14. And he says uh, like this, uh, how can you understand if uh, the one speaking in tongues is not giving you clarity? You see, so he's using tongues, that uh, concept to tell us that there are four different ways as to how we are able to hear from God or understand God or have the mind of God, know more about God. What is the connection? How do we connect with Him? Because obviously we don't see God, isn't it? Yeah. So what is it that is actually making us uh, know Him more, understand Him more? Where, uh, you see, and so this very important four things that I put down at the bottom are four different uh, things that we actually have to know in detail. And we, some churches don't even stress on the first uh, two, that is revelation and prophecy. And they just stress on knowledge and teaching. But I believe both, all these four are equally important for many reasons, you see. Now that's why I put this arrow down and I want to show you that it is through God ministers or God lets him, himself known to us through revelation, prophecy, knowledge, and teaching. And look at this. It's very important to see those on the side of the arrow. Can you see that in the, in the screen? You can see that? The side of the arrow on both sides. Is it too small for you? Is it too small? Okay, maybe, uh, uh, I'll just read it out to you so that you can know this. How is it that revelation and prophecy comes to us? So I just put three things there. You could add some more if you want to. Uh, first of all, directly. We get revelation from God directly. It's not like in the Old Testament times where only the prophets could hear from God or only some king or the priest could hear from God. Every one of us can, are able to receive revelation from heaven. All right? And then we can also receive uh, revelation and prophecy from other saints around us. Very important inside the church when you have meetings and you hear someone share something. You can be sure that God wants to speak to you. It's interesting, isn't it? God doesn't speak to you from heaven directly. You don't hear a voice from heaven. But God always is letting his mind known to us. He's not far away from us. And the more you intimate with him, the more you will hear him through all these ways. 
and finally the, the this side i put a prophetic ministry where prophetic ministry those who are involved in prophetic ministry can also present god's uh, mind to us in many different ways it is not just giving us uh, future events but prophecy is also telling us what is really happening around us all right so so these are three on this side three ways in which god uses uh, revelation and prophecy to speak to us and we have to take that seriously because i think uh, we need this more among us if there are, there are many people here i believe uh, who are not uh, used to receiving revelation and prophecy and i think that's the sad thing in our kind of churches because uh, you see we need to be uh, people who are wanting to hear from heaven uh, all the time i'm not saying that god will speak to you every minute you see but there are things that god always wants to minister to you show you the spirit of god always wants to reveal certain things to you it's such a blessing if you can hear god in what's happening in your life see and i wish that it could happen more not just through prophets of god in the churches but you yourself or through other people around you giving you some revelation some understanding on this side we have knowledge and teaching uh and again here it's it involves self study and most of you you just take that you don't spend you spend very less time so please do some study self study of the bible spend time decide to give half an hour or one hour to spend time with god you see without we don't take up this book how can you uh, understand how can you have knowledge and how can you receive the teaching so the first thing is do self study but also you can have other books to help you there are so many good books in the market you can just ask us if you find any book doubtful if the author is not uh, clear to you or if you found the author is a bit doubtful to you but books are a great help it's a sad thing that people don't read books these days there's a huge lack in the in knowledge and teaching just because people are not willing to read because you cannot uh, we cannot teach you all the time you see now how, we can do one hour modules with you but how, more than that how how, how can we uh, continue to serve you uh, uh day in and day out but if you are, are able to spend time reading i'm just reading a book now today uh i just bought a book last week and it's titled hyper grace by michael brown interesting book you see so you see if only if only we could begin to read i'm telling you you could be so enriched his books are a great help because there are many saints who have really given us wonderful teaching even if they are not here anymore they have passed away maybe they have gone but they still bless us through their books and then we have bible teachers in the churches who give us teaching and knowledge all right so that's what we are doing here today but i want to you to see that uh, these all are important ways don't forget these four things uh, knowledge sorry revelation prophecy knowledge teaching i put it into two different compartments because on this side are, are uh, i mean is revelation and prophecy where we hear directly from god uh, you see now please note that in both of these places we can go wrong don't think that we will go wrong only in prophecy you see because some revelation can come to us from someone and it may be just some fleshly thing i remember one guy many many years ago looking at me and saying uh, this is my 25 years ago i think looking at me and saying i see you like a, a spider on the wall i began to scratch my head i is a spider on the wall <laughs> you see and then i don't know finally he began to say well you're just moving around uh, i just started my ministry by the way 
So I was not doing much ministry at all. You know, I see you moving around here and there like a spider. You see, we can have all kinds of prophecies and it may be right, may be wrong. But you see, we could go wrong here. We can have some, see, revelation is some, again a problem. Many, many churches go off track because of wrong revelation. They receive one pastor can come up and say, this is a new revelation I got from God. You see, and so if you, or you cling on to that, immediately you go in a different track altogether. See? So on this side, you can, maybe you can have false prophets. You can have people who just talk uh, after their own mind. So revelation and prophecy need to be very carefully judged. But we can easily, easy, or equally go wrong even in teaching. A Bible teacher can easily take us astray. So please don't think, in fact, Peter says, very interestingly, Peter says, just like there were false prophets in the Old Testament, he says in Second Peter, there will be false teachers in the new covenant, new, new, in the church age, you see? So, the, so the, the danger is more from false teachers than even false prophets. Isn't that interesting? Peter says, just like there were false prophets in the Old uh, there will be false teachers. And this is much more of a danger because you see, we, are, we all think that the world uses the pulpit to teach everyone they teach us properly, but no. It is so important for us to begin to see that we could uh, also have false teachers taking us astray. And I really want to stress on this uh, the next few times I'm here. So, this is just a chart that can help you to see that this is the, these are ways uh, I mean, uh, through which God ministers and uh, if only we could be people who are excited about all these four ways of learning, of hearing from God. I'm telling you. See, it's such a such a wonderful thing to hear, to maybe receive a revelation from heaven. If God is telling you something and you believe the Spirit of God is, uh, you see, pointing out something to you and, you're, and you know as you grow in God, you know this is something that God is speaking to you about. You see, I cannot teach you how uh, God speaks, but you know deep inside if God is saying something to you. You see, and so, uh, do you guys believe in revelation? You guys, you, I mean, people, I mean, here, do you all, do we all believe in revelation, or are you saying that I'm, uh, I'm from a church that doesn't believe God speaks? God uses only the Bible to speak to us. There are such some churches that say that hundred percent. They say God does not speak other than through the Word of God. You see, and uh, now I think the reason why they have actually said that is also because they have found people saying all kinds of strange things. God told me this, God told me that. You see, one day you'll just get up and say, I heard this from God, he told me to marry another person, to leave my wife. You see, you can, you can use anything and say, God told me. I think that's why they have actually brought this kind of... Uh, what do you say? Safeguards to say God doesn't speak to you outside of the word of God. You see. But the question is, is God silent in heaven today? You ask God a question, you say, is God telling you, now you just go to the word of God and find the answer from there. <laughs> you see. Is God keeping his mouth closed today? Important question for us to answer, isn't it? And many churches are saying yes. Now they are willing to admit that God can lead you in some diff different ways. You see, they are willing to say that the Holy Spirit can guide you and open some door for you and that's how they believe God guides you. But the hundred percent they will say God does not speak today. 
but we are a church that believes that the holy spirit uh, can minister just like he ministered in the first century church you see the holy spirit told paul very clearly don't go there go here isn't it the spirit of god told the church how did the spirit of god speak to them you see told the church set apart from me paul and barnabas how did that happen it may have been through some prophet maybe we don't know but of course exact the exact the word came from heaven and if that could happen in the first century church why not today why is it that we are saying that god does not speak today when he spoke to the first century church if he had not done that then we could have admitted okay god has stopped speaking speaking in the new testament but he spoke to the first century church in fact the acts of the apostles can more clearly be called the acts of the holy spirit it was the holy spirit that actually gave them such clear the guidance such clear words from heaven But then like I told you the danger is that we can hear all kinds of strange things. And that's why it's important for us to actually have a foundation based on the word of God before we can actually grow in hearing from God directly. You see, because our flesh, our mind is so fleshly. You see, that we always want to hear what we like to hear i was hearing somebody share just a few days ago and he was saying like this you see you want to know the will of god he says you will never know the will of god if you have not allowed the cross to bring you to death because you want to go one way and god may want you you to go the opposite way and if you have not come to a point where you are saying i am dead to my desire i am dead to say to that thing that i want how can god show you his desire for you if you are if you are moving this direction the god doesn't work that way if you are head head strong in doing something and you want god to help you to do that i don't think you're going to hear a voice from heaven my son don't do that the more appropriate question is for you to say lord even though i want to do this if you are if you are wanting me to not to do it i am willing i am ready not my will but yours be that's the simple message of the cross working in your life the cross is not just telling you that christ died for you the cross is telling you that you died with him that you have come to a place where you are willing to say not my will but yours be done that's all what the the cross you see can bring you to and if you are not there how can you hear god telling you giving you direction telling you what to do so you see you have to actually build your life based on the foundation of god's word before you can even actually hear clearly from heaven all right and that's why this uh, i mean the bible is so important for us we have to base our foundation is here you see we are not searching anywhere else for a proper foundation you see and please note that revelation and prophecy and all these are important for us but that it can be built it can be established only on this foundation we can't build a house anywhere else so if you are not happy about moving to the word of god let me remind you once again check yourself and ask yourself what is the disease that i am having
Why am I? Please be serious about this because this is a matter of life and death, you see. Physically, if you are sick, you know that you may end up in trouble. You can even die of some disease. But we don't extrapolate that into the spiritual realm. We don't see that if we are not feeding from God, we are dying spiritually. So everything depends on how much you are actually longing to hear from heaven, longing to hear what God is telling you. You see, in this church, we, are, we want to take you further than where some churches take you. Because some churches are happy with just seeing you get your miracle from God. But we want to begin to tell you that every miracle is a sign. And we are here to tell you that you need to hear from God through your miracle. See, when the disciples were walking towards Emmaus and Jesus Christ, you see, met them, isn't it? And what did he do? Yeah? Anyone? Yeah? He began to teach them. What did he teach them? He was pointing them, he was taking the Old Testament and showing them that Jesus Christ was being mentioned everywhere. <laughs> you see? Now my question is, why, did it, why is it that they, they, they could not see that before Christ pointed that out to them? You see? Christ pointed out to them that, hey, look at this. For instance, the tabernacle speaks about me. The prophets are speaking about me. This is speaking about me. He was pointing them to the Old Testament scriptures, not the New Testament. It was not there at all during that time. He used the Old Testament scriptures to point out about himself there in the Old Testament. So my question is, why is it that they were not able to find that by themselves? Why is it that John could take these miracles and, and speak to us about different things about Jesus and we are not able to do that? You see, we are happy with just the miracle. So today I'm not preaching to you, I'm just trying to arouse you all right, to bring you to a place where you're actually beginning to be fed. I, my purpose here, this the end of this year, we have just, how many more Sundays do we have this year? I think two or three, three, you see. Let's, uh, let's come to a place when we're going to the new year of saying, hey, I'm, I'm excited about feeding on God's word. Why is Jesus Christ called the Word of God? If all that you needed was a miracle from God, if all that you need from God is for God to do something for you, you will never understand the beauty of Christ being called the Word of God. See, God is saying something through Jesus. Not just in what he did, but who he was. And let me tell you, the scriptures will be of real help to you only when you stop thinking about what you can get I know there are so many believers today at the church that go to the Bible only to get some words for themselves for the day.
and this bible can be of real help to you when you have stopped looking at the bible just for what you can get and come to the bible for the purpose of knowing what god is saying so i'm not talking to you deep things here please i'm just asking you what is it that you want from god or to put it in another way what does god want from you so this few weeks that we have let's examine our lives and find out where are we 24 of you wrote and said i'm spending very less time with god and his word let me tell you very humbly and very gently it shows you have a disease you see when you are sick physically you know what to do isn't it you take leave there are people who take leave for no other reason but because they are sick isn't it <laughs> forced to take leave hey where a dear brother here working in a very busy bank uh here in kollam punjab national bank he is not here for the past 3 weeks why chicken pox <laughs> can't step out of his house and he's such a busy manager i asked him how does the bank work when you he said i don't know amma it's it's just happening you see you have chicken box you are stuck at home can you go out of your house with chicken box people outside will push you back into your house isn't it you see so when you are sick physically you know that you actually need to wait for the sickness to go something has to happen some medicine or something you just take a break and sit at home but when we are sick spiritually what are we doing about it remember we are all children of god here none of us are here just because we just like to meet other people no we are here because god has saved us and god has a purpose for our lives and let's be clear i was surprised to see that number 2 the high, the top most but not really surprised in one sense spending very less time with god and his word you know most of us don't even know the reason why i don't know how many of you tick number 3 i think we had only 3 or 4 people who tick number 3 but actually you know what number 2 happened because of number 3 I like saying this to you I like saying this all the time either the world will keep you from the word or the word will keep you from the world now the reason why you are not spending time with god's word is because you're spending most time with with the world enjoying the world and its pleasures and what it gives to you or not even the pleasures just being in the world for survival you see the world uh, we uh, we see the many things that we are doing here on earth that we know we should be doing uh, working having a job taking taking care of children so many things and yet you see for god to tell us hey you have to live above this 
if you don't don't spend time with my word you will never be released from the world so the more serious the most serious question is this why am i not longing i just want to quickly for those of us who are going into god's word i just want to help us a bit and we will work more on that later on i just want to tell you the one of the most uh, for those of you who are studying the scriptures see one of the most important things is that you need to uh, apply the old testament principles in the new testament all right it's so important because many of us you see we even though we are sellers for god we go wrong in how to take the old testament scriptures and we use it in a wrong way in the new testament and because of that many of us are not finding our bible study very exciting because we don't see things from the old that we could apply in the new we are not we are not excited about something that god is showing us in the old testament you see just imagine david who had to offer these sacrifices day in and day out what is he saying sacrifices and burnt offerings you did not desire where did he get that thought he was king david offering thousands and thousands of oxen and 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 goats and killing them because he knew that was what god was demanding from uh, from the nation of israel and where did david get this picture sacrifices and burnt offerings you can you can you can you can, can anyone give me the entire words anyone know by heart pardon you can take the scripture and read Uh, instead of guessing all right what does it say which which psalm is this i'm not sure even which psalm it is all right 51 yeah read that verse please before that for you do not delight in sacrifice, sacrifice. otherwise i would give it yes you are not pleased with burnt offerings the sacrifice of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god what an amazing verse you see here this is old testament time not even new testament times here we find king david is just offering the sacrifices because he knows he has to do it but he realized he got revelation from god and he is saying oh god this is not what you really want you may as i am killing this goat i know this is not what you really want because you are showing something else as i kill this goat you are saying uh, a lamb is coming that can take away my sin because this god cannot take away my sin how i long for the day that i'll be i'll be broken inside this is pure revelation my dear friends something that we are doing and yet we know there is something else that god is saying to us that's very exciting if we have received revelation like this you are entering into a new world altogether this is a song that says and the things of this world will grow strangely dim because suddenly we are seeing something in heaven 
the heavenly reality that is so capturing us and we are saying oh god i'm seeing something that the world cannot see so god doesn't throw his pearls before swine and if you are not happy with the revelation god is giving to you you can be sure it will become less and less and less to him that has been given more will be given but to him who does not have even what he has is taken away from him we would die a beggar we are not excited about revelation you know how many people are die in their death bed they cry out and say oh god i wasted my life steve jobs the apple when he was dying you know what he said all my life i worked like a you see uh, i worked so hard but now that i'm dying there is not one single person who is there by my side So you see old testament principles need to be applied in the new i'll just give you one example and then i'll close you see because this is something that we will look at more examples in the days to come i just want to just share one example to you to make you see how important it is for let me talk to you about the blood of jesus now this in our circles today you see most of us think of the blood as a protection for us physically and you know where we got that from the old testament you see because god told them to apply the blood on the door post and they were safe inside but let me ask you this question they were saved inside from wrath from what was it from the devil yeah anyone from the so they were safe inside from god's wrath the physical blood in the old testament kept them safe from god's wrath now in the new testament please note that we who are saved are already out of god's wrath and the new testament the blood has shifted from the old, from the external to cleansing of our hearts there is no single verse in the new testament that says that the blood has to be applied externally or it is meant for your physical protection no every verse in the new testament talks about the blood cleansing your hearts but you know what most of us do when we are when we feel afraid and we want what i want many people pray what is malayalam is rakta tinde rakta tinde rakta valapil rakta rakta go rakta kotakullil you know the danger there we think just because we have done that we are safe from the devil but that was not what was seen in the old testament by the way my dear friends see how we can apply it wrongly the old testament talks about escaping from the wrath of god the blood was applied on the door post because you escape from god's wrath in the new testament there is no longer wrath for you so you can't use the blood to escape from the devil and we apply the blood and we say i apply the blood on the house i apply the blood here i apply the blood on my car i apply the blood on this i apply the blood on that 
and it gives you a false impression that you are safe just because you applied the blood or you play, prayed for the blood. But the blood of Jesus was not meant to keep you safe in that way. If you are in sin, applying the blood will not keep you safe. So please, stop telling yourself that I prayed for the blood. Vaktatene maravil, nya mandiri kisu. I'm telling you, it's so common to see this. We take the application of the blood in the Old Testament. And we use it exactly in the New Testament without even, you see, understanding the principle behind it. In the New Testament, the blood, work of the blood has shifted from the outside to the inside. And now we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. So that you are no longer under gross wrath. And you continue to apply the blood to cleanse your hearts. You don't apply the blood to keep you safe from the, de from the devil. Please stop praying and asking the blood to cover you from the devil. It's a false picture you have. Why? You have not learned to apply scriptures properly. You're not doing things that you should be doing. Instead, you're just saying, let the blood cover me, keep me safe. And it won't. Because if you are in sin, you will be disciplined for it. So you see how we can you see, use principles from the Old Testament so many different ways and have a wrong understanding of how we should progress in God, all right? So we look at this in more detail maybe in the next few weeks, but I just want to once again repeat what I started off by asking you, where is your longing? Now you answered that question, I spend very less time. I hope you found that the answer is also in question number three. And you're so caught up with things happening around you, the physical realm, what you see. is then God wants you to begin to focus on what you cannot see. Are we living for a life that is unseen. Please. You see, the greatest challenge for us is not for God to do things for us in the seen realm. The greatest challenge for us is for us to see God working in the unseen realm. Kanata Talatil. That's what faith is all about, isn't it? What does the word say? We walk by faith and not by... But we have twisted that word and we say, faith brings sight. I believe, I receive. If I don't receive... I'm not surprised what Christ said, when I come back, will I find faith on earth? Because we are all living with a faith for the things down here. And true faith, faith that sees the unseen realm. And we are saying, like Abraham said, 
I'm longing for a city. While I'm living here on tents. Please, I beg of you this morning, can we allow the Spirit of God to minister to us and show us our disease so that we could say, oh, I just don't want to go on like this. I want to long for the pure milk of the Word of God because Jesus Christ himself is called the Word of God. Amen. Can we pray, please? Father, we commit a future to you. When as we did this survey, we realize it shows where we are, what we need. And if only we could be more zealous to find out what we could do to change our situation. How long can we go with our longing for you and for your word. Why is it that we are not able to spend time with you? What excuse do we have? We don't even know, O Lord. And yet you seem so far away from us. What is it that is causing us not to receive revelation from heaven? What is it that is causing us not to long for teaching that we might obey? Why is it that we are not encouraged and edified? Why is it that Paul instructs us to let the word of God dwell richly in us? Oh God in heaven, pray that you would give us a revelation of where we are so that we would take steps that can change our situation. Oh God, if it is sin, if it is deliverance from something that is capturing our minds, every we ask for your help, oh God. May we be brought out from whatever is affecting us so deeply that we don't think of anything else. Oh God, I pray that this major issue that we have would be brought under the light of your presence so that we would find a solution for it. We don't want to live life long as if we need to be delivered. Have mercy on us, O Lord Jesus. We pray together as a church, we would move into the new year, not just being fed, but feeding ourselves. Maybe ourselves receive from you these days. Bless us, church. Bless our meetings. Bless all that we want to do in your name. We ask for your favor in everything that is upon us. Give us a sense of blessedness that we so need these days. Thank you, Lord. Give you glory and praise for this time together. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Lord, I also pray for those who had their birthdays this week. We commit them to you. I pray that they would truly be blessed even as they move into a new year, that they would truly 
find grace in, and mercy for all that they need in their future life. Bless them. O oh Lord, truly bless them with your word and with your presence. Pray for the offering that we have placed before you. You are watching us even as we gave. And Lord, we pray that even our giving would be pleasing to you. May we not do things half-heartedly, O oh God. But with the fullness of mind and purpose, we pray that you would be with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time we had together. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Remember, we're just a few weeks away from the new year. And uh, another 2024 waits for us. Be blessed even as you move into the new year. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you all.